Well, welcome everybody to a very special keynote session with Amazon Studios. It's been a remarkable three years since Amazon Studios launched. Um, if you look at it, they have produced 24 pilots and greenlit 11 series from those pilots. On top of that, they've just announced they're ordering six new series with some big names attached. Uh, the After from X-Files creator Chris Carter and Bosch from best-selling author Michael Conley. Currently, there are two Amazon original series airing on, airing on Prime Instant Video, including the popular political satire Alpha House starring John Goodman. Many commentators have said it's the kind of series you'd expect to come from a more long-established HBO. Also, there's three exciting original children's series, which will debut this summer, which we shall hear about shortly. What's fascinating is that Amazon is doing some things differently from others in the entertainment business. To those who, the, from opening up to commissions to very experienced creators, to those who've never ever worked in the industry before, to, though, to the way that it uses public feedback to help make its decisions on green lighting commissions. So, joining us today is Roy Price, who's director of Amazon Studios. He's actually been at Amazon now for 10 years and was at the helm um, at the very beginning of when the studios were launched. And also, somebody I know very well, Tara Sorensen, who's head of kids uh, programming for Amazon Studios. Tara has 20 years experience in the kids business. She told me not to say that, but um, I have. <coughs> and prior to Amazon was at Sony and Nat Geo. So I'm going to join and start off first of all with, with Roy. So Roy, why did Amazon decide to start up uh, Amazon Studios in the first place? Well, you know, everything we do at Amazon, we uh, let the customers be our guide and we basically do what, uh, what customers, you know, uh, seem to want and are interested in. And, uh, you know, we had a subscription video service mm -hmm. um, that, you know, that people enjoyed. But clearly people are, are interested in original series and uh, original ideas, new work, and they really engage with that. And so we knew that, you know, we should get into that. We should have some of our own signature, signature mm. shows. And, uh, and that's why we started Amazon Studios. And we wanted to do it in a unique way that took advantage of who Amazon was. And so in setting up Amazon Studios, we, we have it so that we reach out to customers as we, as we make decisions, put all our pilots mm. on our website. We have millions of... Uh, TV fans coming to Amazon.com, Amazon UK, uh, and elsewhere, and you know they love to you know engage with new ideas and leave their opinions, and so so we adopted the uh, uh, the process that we have, which is which is very open. So um, you are a business after all. So how can you really take on board your consumers' uh, feedback? How how do you do that? Well, we just put the pilots on the site or make them available wherever people interact with Prime Instant Video. So if they have a Roku or, or uh, Amazon Fire TV uh, on their TV but where, or their iPad or so wherever it is, uh, we just surface the pilots and invite people to watch it and they can rate it, review it, mm. leave a survey. You know, there are many ways to sort of get feedback and we take that into account when we, when we pick shows. Big question, how do producers feel about that? Uh, they are uh, thrilled and uh, uh, no, you know, uh, huh? I, I think everybody's, you know, <laughs> been uh, pretty enthusiastic about the process. I think it's gone well. There can be some initial trepidation, but, you know, at the end of the day, you know, we're in a commercial art form. We're not sort of exchanging <laughs> private haikus, so the, at the end of the day, it's it's, mm. gonna, it's gonna be out there. You wanna get your work out in front of millions of viewers and see what they really think, you know, rather than relying on some sort of intermediary who is, who is like trying to predict what millions of viewers would think, why not just go to them? You know, I mean, if we owned a restaurant and we wanted to put something on the mm. menu, we might have it as a special one night mm. or two, you know, just see if anyone orders it, you know, and it's the exact same thing here. 
Well, it seems, um, you know, a right time now for us to have a look at the fruits of your labours and uh, what everyone's going to judge Amazon Studios on um, ultimately. Um, so, Roy, I'd like you to take us through, I know you've selected a couple of shows which you really want to feature and, and share with everybody here today. Yeah, so mm -hmm. we, we just greenlit um, uh, a, a number of shows and uh, one of them, we're going to show a couple clips today. One is called The After. And that was created by Chris Carter, and it's a kind of, you'll see, it's sort of post-apocalyptic, uh, well, it's a little, I don't want to give away what is really happening, but it's a, uh, a situation in Los Angeles, and um, Chris has a ton of fans on, on Amazon and uh, who are super eager to see you know, where he's going to take this situation, and then the other clip is uh, our new show called Bosch, which is based on the character Harry Bosch from the um, novels by Michael Connolly that have been super popular mm -hmm. on Amazon.com. And, uh, and so let's, uh, let's see what we've got. Well, pretty dramatic stuff. Yep, <laughs> yep. Uh, we started in comedy originally. So we did Alpha House and Betas, and uh, then we expanded. And we started in comedy and preschool. And then in the last pilot season, we expanded to uh, include drama and, um, and kids 6 to 11. Mm. So we've been kind of expanding from a mm. genre point of view. Well, I'm sure from the audience here, producers and distributors, uh, a few informational questions. Um, what are the budget levels? Because those look pretty dramatically, um, you know, beautifully shot. Um, the budget levels and what's your funding proposition? And, and I suppose the million dollar question is, uh, what is the rights position if people are going to interact with you? Yeah, that was actually Century City being blown up there. So it was, <laughs> it was very inconvenient for Creative Artists Agency for a day. but. Um, uh, so let's see. The uh, well, the right situation is you know we're currently in the U.S., the U.K., and Germany with mm -hmm. the subscription service, and so outside of those contexts, by and large, uh, we're looking to distribute to other people, uh, and so like Sony is is representing Alpha House and Betas, and uh, Bosch is at Red Arrow, who mm -hmm. are our partners on that show. And, you know, our only priority <laughs> is getting great shows for Amazon customers. And so we're not really religious about um, uh, exactly what the deal has to, be, has to look like. There are different flavors, and, and we can sort of do any of the flavors. Um, so some of them are, are co-production, some of them we own entirely. Uh, the budgets are, um, they're sort of premium cable, you know, mm -hmm. U.S. premium cable budgets. Um, I think if you put them on a list with a bunch of, you know, FX, AMC, HBO mm -hmm. shows, by and large, you wouldn't be able to pick out, you know, which are the Amazon shows. They're in, in that same ballpark. And, uh, and that's, that's how it works. And when you're looking at a show mm -hmm. um, and looking to green light that show for, a, say, a second series, what's the criteria you actually adopt to, to, to make that decision? Well, you know, of course, we, we reach out to customers and, and get their feedback and their opinion. I, I think from a, from a creative point of view, whether the show comes, uh, you know, whoever the show comes from, I think the, the principle today, you know, in an on-demand environment is you really need a group of people who are passionate about the particular show mm -hmm. for the show to work. You know, the show could be broadly appealing but have a kind of shallow appeal and that might, that might not work well in an on-demand environment. So, um, so when you look at the data, uh, you kind of have to look at it that way and find the pocket of people who, who are really passionate about that show. And I think, I think the you know, I think the best way to get that and to make a real connection and do something really distinctive is, is to find a passionate, talented creator who has a voice and who really wants to do something new. Maybe that project that, uh, you know, they really wrote it kind of for, for themselves, you know, just because mm -hmm. they thought it would be great. And, um, and I think there's an opportunity now to try to do those really distinctive projects. We just, um, so we're in production on 10 series now. We're in production on 11 pilots. 
And, and um, you have some news hot off the press, yeah, I gather, to share with everyone. As a couple of examples that I think are good examples of that development principle, um, we are shooting this week in Paris uh, the pilot called Cosmopolitans, The Cosmopolitans, uh, created by Whit Stillman. Uh, Adam Brody is in it, mm -hmm. Carrie McLemore, and Chloe Sevigny will be there. And um, it's about a group of expatriates in Paris, and it's kind of glamorous and fun. It's a half hour. Uh, and uh, kind of on the other side of the spectrum, because it's a big, <laughs> big kind of edgy, dark, you know, serial drama with a great character at its, at its heart, uh, a show called Hand of God, uh, created by Ben Watkins. Uh, mm -hmm. Pilot is being directed by Mark Forster now. Uh, it's Ron Perlman's return to TV. He'll be playing the lead. Uh, after Sons of Anarchy, and Dana Delaney is in the show, and a great cast. And that's a, a show about a judge who um, uh, sort of becomes a vigilante, and it's, it's a really interesting, unique story. You read the script, you should be able to read the script and say, that's a unique show. It's not going to, you're not going to lose sight of it in the clutter. So that's kind of what we look for. And, and then all the data comes in. And, uh, and there are a lot of ways to slice the customer feedback. And um, we take all the data that does not agree you know, with my personal opinion. We throw that data away. And then we look at the other data. I'm just kidding. Um, no, we you know, take it. And uh, it is great to uh, you know, give the customer a seat at the table making those decisions. And it's often very insightful. So. I know we talked about it earlier, but in terms of how will you and, and the studios be judged by Amazon, what is the criteria that, that you need to fulfill now that you've got you know, this great body of work? You know, at the end of the day, the, the purpose of Amazon Studios and having original content on Prime is to make Prime uh, video uh, richer and, and more valuable for Amazon mm -hmm. customers, whether it's with big dramas like uh, The After of Bosch or Hand of God or, or comedies or, or preschool shows and kids shows. And uh, so I think ultimately what we look at is, is it contributing to the health of the service? Are you getting uh, mm -hmm. customers engaging with the shows? Or, or, and is the service growing because people are maybe talking about the shows at lunch with their friends, which I encourage everyone to do. Um, and so that's probably the ultimate goal, yeah. And you talked about the expansion that you've had in, in genres, starting off with comedy and drama. What's next? I'm sure everyone here uh, would, would like to hear where the, where the new plans are, the new genres you're going to be tackling. Um, you know, we are looking at any, interested in any idea that is, it's distinctive and uh, it's a genre that Amazon customers are responding to. So um, that one, that's pretty broad though, you know, because we have a pretty big uh, mm -hmm. customer base. So uh, certainly sci-fi like, you know, Chris Carter, but also, I mean, Downton Abbey and um, uh, Dora, and so that, that gives us a fair amount of latitude. I would expect to expect to cover cover all genres and, and make the decision principle be, you know, is it distinctive? Is it really great? So before I turn to Tara, just one last question for you. Uh, what are you looking for? What uh, can some of the producers uh, come and approach you, both from the open door policy, but also from the established normal sort of development process? Yeah, so we do have kind of a, a you know, two ways. One is uh, we do have a totally public uh, way for people to upload scripts, and we read all those scripts. And um, of our 24 pilots, two of them have actually come just because they were uploaded to the website. And then we met those people, and they turned out to be great. And in our first pilot season, uh, we had a half hour called Those Who Can't, which was hilarious and great. Um, and this pilot season, we had a kids 6 to 11 live action show called Gordimer Gibbons, uh, which, which was terrific. And, uh, and we ordered Gordimer, so we're going into production on Gordimer. I think that'll be a great show. But uh, then also just the traditional you know, agents and managers and uh, producers and so on. And we're, you know, so we, it's, it's both and, not either or. We do kind of traditional development and sourcing and, and uh, the website. And so 
Fantastic. Well, yeah. good time now to talk, uh, turn to you, Tara. Um, you know, it's a time when lots of channels are cutting back on kids' shows and some not serving that audience at all. Why is it that Amazon decided to go into the kids' programming genre? A huge part of our customer base is families and kids, and so we saw with Prime Instant Video and Amazon Instant Video that there were a number of kids' shows that were rising to the top. So we decided to start with preschool programming. Mm -hmm. um, you know, as a, an Amazon customer and a mom myself, I knew it was important for us to, to really think about the shows in a different way. And as Amazon prides itself on innovation, you know, how could we interpret that through a kid's lens? So in addition to providing stories with, you know, great characters, um, we wanted to give some sort of educational curriculum, but do it in a different way. So we've really looked at that curriculum through creativity. Um, as you look at this ever-changing world, you know, we knew that information was ubiquitous, but how could we prepare kids for a future ahead? And we thought that, you know, it was important to look at that through creativity, that it's not about information regurgitation. It really is about thinking outside of the box, and so um, kids could be problem solvers in a much larger way. So is that your point of, you pointed to your point of differentiation, would you say, how would you describe that mission that you have for? Yeah, so our, you know, educational curriculum is, is being built out right now. We brought in Dr. Alice Wilder, whose, uh, you know, groundbreaking work was quoted in Malcolm Gladwell's The Tipping Point, um, with the, the idea of creating lifelong learners. The idea that children are natural born explorers and scientists, like how could we sort of capture that and then take it through them for the rest of their lives. So creativity, play will be really important in how we look at those kids shows and still looking at, you know, left and right brain curriculum, but really again interpreting in a different way. So I know you've uh, worked extremely hard for the last three years. Now you're expanding into a very tricky area, which is the sort of six to 11s. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about how you're looking to service the needs of that quite yeah. hard audience to, to tackle. Yeah, six to 11 is right now being defined, I think, for us. Um, it definitely is a trickier space. In six to 11, we're not looking to do anything that's grounded in educational curriculum, though I think we still will be inspired by our you know, lifelong learning curriculum. The idea that our main protagonists can be role models for kids. I think kids today are not, you know, looking up to the Justin Biebers or the Miley Cyruses, they might have different role models, and so how can we create at the core, you know, smart characters that kids want to emulate? Um, so, as you mentioned, we did expand into 6 to 11. Um, we had a couple of animated pilots and some live action pilots. I think in the live action space, it's much easier for us to differentiate ourselves and think more innovatively simply by doing single camera, as you see with Gortimer. Um, in the animation space, we've also looked at serialized programs, um, but there are definitely some genres that are still working well. Again, we see that in Prime Instant Video. So how could we think differently about, you know, comedies, action adventures, um, that's sort of where we're going to now. You know, while we don't expect co-viewing, um, although that would be fantastic, we do want to make sure that we're not, we're being responsible to our parents who are really the gatekeepers of Prime. Um, so we have to, you know, walk a, a little bit of a, a difficult line with that. But we're figuring it out. So you're talking about parents, and I know Roy referred to earlier, how you incorporate sort of research and feedback yeah. from the consumer. How does that work within yeah. your um, remit? So we definitely also do online testing, um, but we also, knowing that preschool was our first, um, you know, pilot season, we wanted to make sure we were seeing exactly how preschoolers were reacting um, and talking about the show versus having mom interpret for them, because sometimes there's different stories to get there. Um, but we also use formative testing, um, which is, again is something that Alice Wilder has been known for, to make sure that our stories and characters are sticky or resonating with our audience. Um, you know, and, and so we'll look at a couple of different forms of feedback and really try to incorporate that into our show. Um, actually, in Creative Galaxy, knowing that moms felt the live action segment at the end was different and informative and something they really reacted to positively, we decided to expand that sequence. 
So, so we do so look at you do listen. We we do <laughs> listen and we see all of it. <laughs> well, you know, this must be such an exciting time for you because I know this summer finally everything you've been working yeah. for is coming to fruition. So I'm sure everybody here would like to see what's going to be yes. knocking everybody off their yes. uh, <laughs> um, so the Summer of Amazon Kids, um, it's like a birthing a baby if it took uh, 24 months. Um, <laughs> we're in production on 52 half hours, the first of which is Creative Galaxy from the creators of Blue's Clues and Super Y and Daniel Tiger's Neighborhood. Angela Santamero came to us with a project that I think spoke really wonderfully to the curriculum that we were building out. So it combines life skills with um, creativity. Uh, we have this alien artist at the center named Artie who sourced source through the Creative Galaxy, always looking for um, a solution to a problem that he has, and he's determined to fix it with art. Um, we got Brooke Shields and Jason Priestley and Samantha mm -hmm. Bee and others to join the cast. We're able to feature master artists like Picasso and Van Gogh and Calder and Kandinsky. So it's something we feel like has a sophistication, but will also resonate with the younger audience. Nine Story was our animation production company. They've been a really wonderful partner, and we're able to do an incredible job knowing that we have somewhat tight timelines on our schedule. So we're excited about Creative Galaxy. Um, and then our next series is Tumbley from a, an award-winning stop-motion studio in Los Angeles called Bix Picks. Tumbley features a blue fox named Fig who is an adventurer at heart and discovers um, play and science around every corner. Um, and our last series is Androids from Sinking Ship, the creators of Dino Dan. It features you know, brilliant scientists who happens to be a nine-year-old girl um, and has literally built her friends, her androids. So, you know, we always talk about if you ask a kid if they wanted to learn science or STEM, their immediate reaction would, say, would be no, but if you ask them if they wanted to build a robot, they probably would be a lot more excited about that. And again, it sort of speaks to the curriculum and how we're interpreting that through our shows. So Androids is more transitional preschool, four to seven, a live action series with CG characters. And we I think it's fascinating the range that you've got there. And obviously those three shows all came from very well-established creators. But Roy referred to earlier that I think from your perspective, one of the most exciting and kind of heartwarming stories is about one of your open door um, submissions. So right. perhaps you could tell us a little bit about how that came about. So Gordon Morgibbon's Life on Normal Street um, was a script that was uploaded to Amazon Studios, came from a first time creator, David Anaxagoras, who was a preschool writer, I'm sorry, a preschool teacher by day. Um, he actually got his MFA in screenwriting from UCLA, but had never sold anything. Um, you know, heard about Amazon Studios and thought he was going to give it one last shot. So we found the script, we fell in love with it. It was a really beautiful piece of writing, but something that didn't necessarily speak to a 6 to 11 audience, felt like it had um, a, an appeal to an older audience and wasn't something that we had seen in a long time or I think seen in kids' television. Um, so, you know, Roy was... I think a great cheerleader of the script and encouraged us to green light it, knowing that this was the time for us to be experimental. So um, the story centers around three quirky friends. Um, there's a magical realism to it, with the idea that you're not sure if something actually happened. So the pilot uh, deals with the, the end of summer. The summer's never ending, and so a next door neighbor you know, asks Gordimer for help in defeating this frog of ultimate doom. Um, and I always talk about the show as something that really mirrors David's experience. You know, as Roy talked about, creators, um, you know, coming up with a concept that's really near and dear to their heart. I think that Gordimer is a perfect example of that because I still feel like David might be pinching himself thinking, wait a second, I uploaded a script to Amazon Studios, <laughs> they optioned it. Um, they then produced the pilot. We got an Oscar-winning director on board in Luke Matheny. Uh, we were able to connect to cast Fanula Flanagan from Waking Ned Divine, which I think was a coup in kids' television, and really looked at the whole process in a different way. Um, and then he hit the ultimate, I think, jackpot when we greenlit his series. So right now we're in production on 12 episodes, and we saw customer feedback, especially from moms and dads talking about how this is something that they hadn't seen in a long time, um, that this is something they're excited to watch with their kids, 
And again, while we didn't expect co-viewing, I think as you look at the kids' landscape, you know, what comes after 6 to 11, there's not really that family experience anymore. Um, and I hope that, you know, Gordimer Gibbons will, will provide that for us. So you've taken a risk. Um, how far are you going to continue to take risks with people who, you know, don't have the experience um, that perhaps others who've been trying for years to get their shows away? I think it depends, I mean, you know, Amazon I think is known for taking risks, but I think it depends on the idea. If there's a great idea there and somebody needs help executing it, we've done a really nice job in pairing people together so that we're still um, speaking to their vision and, and executing it in a way that they're proud of, but also surrounding them with, you know, producers and showrunners that are well established and have the experience to execute something to the highest level of quality. And in terms of budgets in your genre, um, how, how are those budgets and, and what kind of deals are you doing with people? Yeah, so I think our budgets are also comparable to, you know, kids' networks. Um, you know, we definitely produce in smaller quantities, so where, whereas you might look at 26 half hours or 40 half hours on other shows, we're looking at smaller quantities. Um, I think we would certainly look at larger orders if customer feedback supported that, but right now we really wanted to offer up variety to our customers so that we could give them, you know, something that they, they wanted. Um, so, so, a question to both of you. So, um, a lot of shows are going to be happening this year. When, 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 when do you regroup and what, what will be the next stage um, in the development of uh, Amazon Studios, would you say, Roy? Well, I think we're going to have more pilots uh, mm -hmm. out uh, this year, so we'll, we'll probably have one or two occasions where we release pilots in the rest of the year and um, uh, we just greenlit some shows based on the February pilot season so I think we'll see some of those premiere before the end of the year and then we'll kind of just get on that cycle where probably we have two or three pilot seasons a year and and then just kind of premiere shows throughout the year. Okay so there's been a lot of uh, discussion with and about Amazon and set-top boxes, is there, is there anything from that perspective that uh, you, know, you feel that, that a lot of questions have been asked about that? Is that something from the studio's perspective is uh, a good thing? You know, the more distribution and the, the easier it is for mm -hmm. people to get to Prime and, and the better their experience is, uh, the, that's all good for Amazon and good for Amazon mm -hmm. Studios. Uh, will produce the shows and they go into Prime and people find them however they're finding it, whether it's Kindle Fire TV or the iPad or, or what have you. So, uh, so great to see the Kindle Fire TV come out, and, um, but we'll, we'll just keep on producing shows. Fantastic. I think we may have a little bit of time for a few questions if there's uh, any, any, anyone out there who'd like to uh, ask Roy and Tara. Sorry, the gentleman here. Hello, thank you. Stuart from the MIT blog. Um, is there anything, is there any links happening between what you're doing with children's television over here and apps and the Kindle Fire over here? Are you doing anything with interactive experiences on tablets that will tie into the kids' TV shows? Um, so we don't have anything, you know, that we can really talk about at this time, but it's, it's clearly an interesting area that we are, you know, looking into, and we'd like to figure something out along those lines. I think there's a good opportunity, whether it's second screen or, or just, you know, uh, the primary activity that uh, obviously we should take advantage of, and we're working <laughs> on exactly how to do that. <laughs> Any other questions? Uh, as a lady uh, said that uh, before, uh, you, you mentioned that uh, you did some uh, preschool uh, testing of the pilot. Yeah, and uh, can you share some detail of the uh, pre-broadcasted uh, uh, audience test and uh, some details of uh, if you have other devices of uh, the uh, audience survey and audience uh, investigation for you to 
uh, target on the parents, the kids. Thanks. The formative testing that we do is informal. So Dr. Alice goes into preschooler to preschools where they feel comfortable in the environment. Um, and takes copious notes on how kids were viewing the animatic or reacting to a written story. Um, the online testing, in, in our first round we did animatics, in our second round we did fully produced pilots. We're able to look at you know, customer feedback, um, we're able to look at star ratings, we're able to look at how customers are watching those. Um, programs, and then we also take that same, um, you know, pilot into more traditional focus groups where we work with moderators and speak to a group of kids in the core, core audience and also parents in the core audience. So, so somewhat, you know, traditional in, in terms of, um, you know, kids production. I think we only have time for one more question. Um, I think there was a, somebody here. I think the gentleman at the front. I wanted to know how to submit projects to you. <laughs> uh, you can email us or you could upload it to Amazon Studios. Um, you know, we review everything and I think it comes down to again, you know, is the core concept something that hasn't be been seen before and can it be a signature Amazon series? Unless there's one very, very quick question. Uh, what are your, um, your plans for foreign productions in other territories? Uh, for producing, uh, producing overseas? Well, we're doing this pilot in France right now. Um, and we do find it's like we did a half hour that we ordered called Mozart in the Jungle. Uh, based on a, a, a book, and it's, it's set in Manhattan around kind of the classical music scene. And we shot that there, um, and you really, you get something out of shooting in the actual place you know, where the show is set. It just gives you that extra level of, uh, of reality, and, um, and so we're shooting Paris for Paris and New York for New York, and uh, so we'll go, we'll go where, the, where the show takes us, generally. If anyone has a kid series that they want to shoot in Hawaii, I'm your girl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, but that. seriously, we look at, for the kids uh, space, <laughs> we're doing productions right now with Canada. We have shows set in the, you know, that are in the UK being produced, so we really look around the world, and we've seen quite a bit of international concepts come through um, Kids Screen, where a lot of producers are. Well, thank you very much, Roy and Tara, for giving us a great insight into the work that you've been crafting for three years now, at least. Um, and congratulations, and we look forward to seeing all of those shows, great shows out there this year, and we look forward to you coming back next year to tell us what next. And thank, thank you, everyone you. in the Thanks audience. For coming.